Welcome to another episode of the Southern Boating Podcast. I'm Ian Sneed. I'm James Anderson. And today we have a fun episode. We're going to be talking about one of the largest catamarans, power catamarans that I've ever come across. Okay. I, I, it's it's definitely a sizable it is catamaran. A, it's when you incredible. see it, it's yeah. distinctive. It reeks elegance. Yeah. What, what I can say about it. It's so, just amazing. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about uh, a destination that I think everybody should go to, which is why it's on my itinerary, but you have a lot of experience with this destination. I do. It's one of my favorite places. So we're definitely talking about that because I would need a little more insight. Yep. And then we're going to touch on something that I feel is very important because for me, it actually touches on to a safety element uh, when we're out on the water. And that's, you know, your general health and fitness. Yeah. So we're going to touch on those three topics today and let's kick it off with the power catamaran. Mm. So it is the Fontaine Peugeot Power 67. Yes. And when I said it reeks of elegance before, it, it really does. I mean, I first came across this last year when it debuted at Miami. And I almost, it, it stopped me in my tracks. Because number one, it's just impressive with the size. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it just catches you. The first time you see it, you look at it and you go, wow. Yeah. That's well, big. It's, <laughs> it's the beam, for example, is 32 feet, three inches. <laughs> Correct. Like that's the beam is bigger than a, some, a lot of the boats out on the water. Correct. Like, yeah. Think I about mean, that. It, it really, if you is, really yeah. think about it. It's like, yeah. Okay. That's huge. It's, it's sizable. It's got tons and tons and tons of space. It's so from, much space from aft deck to fore deck to it's salon to just everything on this boat is sizable. I mean, it's, but it's got more square footage than my house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so this boat is quite literally for, you know, the discerning boater mm -hmm. that wants to enjoy their time. But now I want to make a point because they did really well about taking care of both, not just the inside space that you have, but the outside space. Correct. Right? Like, it's incredible what they did on, you know, okay, so the cool thing about this boat is when you're looking at power catamarans, you have people that are, you know, power catamarans, that's what they've always focused on. But then you have manufacturers that they made sailing catamarans and are now transitioning into the power catamaran market. And so they have a slightly different view of how to approach it because of the boats that they've produced in the past. So when you look at this boat, I think that's exactly what's happening is you're getting that flavor of the sailing catamarans that they had created in the past. Well, yes, that's exactly right because it is based on one of their other models, which was the Allegra mm -hmm. 67, mm -hmm. which is a sailing cat. Yes. So they took that model and then developed it a little bit further and made some further refined it just a little bit more mm -hmm. and came out with the power 67 right. and like i said the moment that you see this boat it stops you in your tracks because mm -hmm. you're amazed by the size of it you don't realize how big it really is until you see it with your eyes i mean the, the, the magazine and its pictures do it justice but seeing it in person is a whole different thing right um and you're just gonna see i mean for example it's got you know Unbelievable. 527 square feet on the foredeck. And that's, that's that's huge. And I, I thought it was really crafty what they did because the the sailing cat version that has um like the trampoline space, right? And so what they did here is not what it's called. They've got a name for that. What's it called? I don't know. Oh. Well, I'm we not shouldn't a, say that. I'm not a sailing person, so I don't I'm know. not a sailing person. If you either. if you want to comment and let me know <laughs> what that piece of the boat is. I'm so happy to learn. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what they did is they put a, a solid, um, I don't want to call it a transom. That, that's not the right word. But they put a solid piece across the two. Help me out, man. I'm having a day. <laughs> 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 this right str here. Struggling with your words this, today. Yes. So this the thing right here. Is this, it's Four deck, like I mentioned, the it's four, over yes, 500 square feet. God. It's got, you know, mm -hmm. a sunken. Uh, right, you had already it, said that. Yep. Exactly. It's got a two person hot tub up there. It's got just it's enough space crazy. to do everything you really want. You can separate yourself from people. This boat is just amazing. I mean, if you really, really, for example, if it's, if it's your family's boat mm -hmm. and you have a couple of kids or you're entertaining, you know, your friends, there's enough room that if you get tired of each other, you guys can separate 
and enjoy opposite spaces mm-hmm. and really not even know that the other people are there. Right. I mean, that's kind of crazy. This is such an... And it's got access to the owner's suite or the owner's estate room mm-hmm. from, from the four deck as Ford well, deck. which is really, really nice. So it's kind of like that, you know, the uh, condo that has the master suite that has its own private balcony, right? It's it's, it's kind of sets that atmosphere. It's just amazing. It's a lot of space. It's got the 32 foot beam. It's got four state rooms. Um, all on suite, one of the, right? On, all on suites. Um, it's actually got uh, room for a crew as well. So it's got its own crew uh, quarters. It's just got everything that you really need. And you expect that from a cat this you size, do, right? Absolutely. But it's just also very light feeling, very open. The thing that I noticed too is if you're a tall person, mm-hmm. this boat's got nice seven foot tall, you know, seven head feet of headroom, right? which is excellent. I mean, we got some tall people around here. I'm not exactly tall, but you know, you're, you're taller than average. A little taller I mean, than average. But I'm taller than average, which is mine. What's, mine what's average? 5'8". I thought I was average. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> you know, it, it's just got so much space. Personally, to me, I can't get enough of looking at it. You know, just like everything with Fontaine Peugeot, it's got a nice fit and finish to it. It's just really beautiful. The way they've set this up, the the, the amenities on this boat. For example, when you're on the fly bridge, you don't have to go down the stairs to go access one of the refrigerators on the aft deck or anything along those lines. You can actually, it's got everything up on the sky bridge. So it's got down below. It's just everything has been thought about with this boat. And just, it, it's, it's living in the lap of luxury. Yeah. I mean, it really and is. So and earlier we, we kind of touched. I think we titled it, this is no lap cat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, earlier we touched on on the entertainment element, right? Mm-hmm. So it's the boat, um, the yacht. You could take it out because really it's it's or luxury. power cat. Yeah, well, it's a power cat, yeah. So you could take it out when you want to escape anything on land. Absolutely. Right, oh, you can use it as an escape, but you can also use it to entertain because of how much space there is inside and outside. And so, one of the points in our article that I really wanted to point out was, um, since the center of activity on a catamaran is usually the aft cockpit, Fontaine Peugeot dialed this one in. So, when you look at the photos of the of that aft cockpit. It's mm-hmm. incredible. They have a table that can fit. I think it was ten people. Ten people, and that's just on the port side. Yeah. They still have extra space on the starboard side where they have, uh, I guess it's like a bench, it's a seat. I don't know. They have a lot of space to entertain. And when you really take that into account, like I can't fit 10 people around my kitchen table. I don't even have 10 friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, so don't ask to add me. The table will be half full for me. <laughs> don't ask to add me <laughs> to, to, that, to that dwindling list of yours. You know my there. friend? That's harsh. <clears throat> So, no, <laughs> seriously, if you want to read the article, because there's a lot of detail in this article. It and really is. Uh, I, this was in January. It was January, in our Reader's Choice Awards uh, issue. January 2024, to be clear. Correct. So it's it's, it's just a, about a month old at this point in time. We're still mm-hmm. in February, right? Mm-hmm. February? Yeah. Feb- yeah, I mean, as, yeah, February. I lose track of time. It's okay. Um, but yeah, you read up on this boat. And if you have the time, go see this boat in person. It'll yeah. wow you. It's yeah. it's breathtaking. It's beautiful. It's got really everything that you need. So if you're looking for a power cat and you're looking for a power cat that's got some size to it, yeah, this is one you need to take a look at. Definitely. Now, just a quick reminder before we move on to our destination. Do us a favor. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Give us a comment. Let us know what content you want to see from us. That way we can make sure to bring you the things that you're going to enjoy watching. If you're listening anywhere else and you want to leave a a review, we would really appreciate it. And really the reviews and the subscriptions, they help us know how well we're doing as far as providing you with information you want to hear. So give us a subscribe, give us a like, give us a review. We very much appreciate it. And with that, let's move into the next topic, Mm -hmm. which is I'm going to say Something that James really, really wants to talk about. And before you go off, hold on, before you go off, let me tell you, 
I had to, I was doing research for it, right? Yep. And obviously I, I read the magazine for research a lot of the time. So the one thing I remember is this is the the sponge was it sponge, sponge town capital sponge, of the world sponge capital of the world that's what i remember and that there's a lot of greek food <laughs> tons right? of greek food so, my fave yeah so if you like greek food you, you better listen in otherwise you should listen in because it's a wonderful destination it's a beautiful city if you look at photos and i'm gonna let james kind of just run with this yeah so we're gonna talk about tarpon springs Tarpon Springs, as I've told you, I go there at least once a year, mm -hmm. many times, multiple times during the year. Um, I just booked my trip for Easter in Tarpon Springs, which mm -hmm. I will visit some family and friends. Mm -hmm. um, and we've done it for the last couple of Easters. Um, it's, it's number one, the sponge capital of the world. So there's an area of town where you can go watch walk the sponge docks but it's also a part of town that there's a lot of shopping in a lot of fun a lot of restaurants it is a greek based town mm -hmm. so you find a lot of people uh speaking their native tongue there yeah um because they are greek um the the greek restaurants from hellas to there's probably four absolutely amazing Greek restaurants. I can't remember the names of all of them, right. but I can tell you it's the type of restaurant that I, there's not a bad thing on the menu. <laughs> and <laughs> I may want to eat everything on the menu, which is horrible for me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell, the, I'm gonna tell the, the viewers and listeners what you told me today, that you should really roll into the restaurant because by the time you're done eating, you literally need to be rolled out. Oh, yeah. Moving is a hassle. Uh, yeah, you, I mean, from from... Absolutely everything. I mean, it's from appetizers to entrees to desserts to just, I mean, the Greek bakeries that are in some of these Greek restaurants mm -hmm. and just really a you lot know, of I've fun. Never, I've never had Greek bakery. I like, always, oh. oh, oh I've oh, had baklava, yum, 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 but yum. I consider that a dessert. It is. Yeah, but but, I don't but it's in the bakery. Oh, okay. Where do you I get mean, your desserts? At a restaurant? Like after dinner? Okay. I mean, I, that's what I do. Unless, well, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, unless I go to um, that's that's true. Uh, nothing but bunt cakes or something like that. Like, oh, yeah. have you ever had that? I'm getting one right by my house, actually. Nice. Yeah. I love that's that what place. I need. That's what I, I need. Yeah, I love that place. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna um, be in trouble. Yeah, but <laughs> I do need to compare some of my actual favorite. I'm a big chocolate chocoholic, like chocolate fan, 100. Right. percent I do have a sweet tooth, but I lean chocolate. I lean towards chocolate. But I do, ever since I've tried baklava, I'm like, yo, I need to try more exotic, I'm going to call them exotic desserts and exotic it, pastries. And <laughs> so Then you need to go to Tarpon Springs. Which is exactly why so I'm asking you about it because I've never had it. it yeah, was, you know, so you go up the Alicot River from the Gulf Coast, mm -hmm. about two miles, three miles in, I think is there. Um, they've got a municipal um, marina that's right in the, uh, area to where all the sponge docks are. Mm -hmm. uh, I do know that they have a couple of transient slips and the dock master there, if, if his transient slips are full, he's a super nice guy. He's going to help you find another transient slip at another marina, mm -hmm. um, which is a couple of other marinas and it's easy to navigate. It's not terribly hard. Um, so if, if you're not as experienced as some others, or you feel that you are not experienced enough, well, this might be something to help build your confidence mm -hmm. um, because it is a freshly dredged channel currently right now. Mm -hmm. um, so you can get some large boats in there. It's not a problem. Um, and then, you know, you, you can really enjoy the city. It's also a historic town. Right. Um, so there's downtown as well, which has got a lot of stuff. Uh, one of my favorite places to go to, oddly enough, transforms me right back to being a kid is they got a pinball kind of bar restaurant. Really? It's got all the pinball machines. You Dude. give them a couple of bucks. They let you play as much pinball as you want. Now that's fun. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and they got more restaurants in the downtown area. It's very beautiful. Uh, very historic Florida style, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, you, you see a lot, mm -hmm. um, you know, because once you get outside of South Florida, it, Florida kind of transitions a little bit and looks a little yeah. different. Yeah. Um, and this kind of resonates kinda that. Yeah. Um, but as well as some of the other things that are, that are going on there, um, they have uh, every year they have 
it's it's a very important time of the year for the Greeks and that let first me week sure of January, right? That first week of January, yeah. correct? Because th- so <laughs> since they're Greek, they they're most of the people there are Greek Orthodox, correct? And they have you know some different celebrations. And I think the one is this what you're referencing? Yes. Yeah. And so they have the one where they they throw the the white it's cross. The spring Bayou. Spring so Bayou. It's, yep. it's Spring Bayou, and it is actually. Um, so I think it was January sixth. Park. Yep, January sixth. About 25,000 people gather for this. Yeah. So that's huge. Because this is... No, that's massive. Tarpon Springs is actually kind of a small town when you're there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you'll recognize it that way. Um, but it's the Epiphany Celebration. Okay? And what's really neat about this, at Craig Park in the Spring Bayou, the priest throws in a white cross. Right. And about 25 young boys mm-hmm. in their... Anywhere from their late teens to early 20s mm-hmm. dive in after it. Mm-hmm. And go try and rescue the cross. And I think like that just sounds like a fun event to go experience, mm-hmm. especially. It's, yeah, yeah, and it's the largest epiphany in the Western Hemisphere as well. That's awesome. So really, really cool. Yeah. Um, just a lot of different things. I mean, when I go there, I stay at an Airbnb or a VRBO mm-hmm. because there's it, it's really kind of easy to get a place there, and it kind of puts you in the mood with with the historic place so like for example i just booked a airbnb and a little historic cottage right really cool yeah, so you fun. connect you connect a lot more you're gonna stay right in downtown now um, my, my question i know this is off topic i'm gonna say do you say vrbo because i would always say verbo i say vrbo vrbo i don't i was like oh just get a verbo What's a verbo? Uh, if you would have told me get a verbo, I would be like, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Right now that you said VRBO, I'm like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess that's kind of easier. To I mean, say do you that. try and sound out Airbnb? Yes, technically, because you're reading Air. BNB? Well, I mean, that's different because that you a- know it's an acronym. Airbnb? <laughs> Airbnb. <laughs> Airbnb. Is that, is that, you're right. I mean, that's the same thing, right? You're right. <laughs> you're right. And it's uh, also capital A, <laughs> lowercase I R B N B. Yeah, yeah. And VRBO is all caps. Yeah, that's true. No, you're right. You're, you're a little right. Sign. I, I, you know, I make mistakes. I'm human. Considering that's... we're in the publication world. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but that's writing versus spoken, which true, I guess true. now have, we have to touch on. So go ahead and make your last points about this, and let's let's move on to the next subject. So it, to me, I'll make our last points. If you haven't experienced Tarpon Springs, mm-hmm. try to. It's a lot of fun. It's a unique place in Florida. Just a lot of experiences that you can have, you know, kind of transitions you into a different time period. You, you, you don't feel like you're in Florida, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just, it's really just a great town, a lot of fun, great people, great restaurants, lots to do, very friendly. So if you're looking for a place to go on the Gulf Coast in your next cruising adventure, try Tarpon Springs. You won't be disappointed. All right. I like that. I promise. <laughs> yeah. I will. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, so you it's on my itinerary. Since you're new to Florida. It's on my itinerary. I'm you telling better. you. Yeah. All right. And next is something that. Well, this is your wheelhouse. Yeah, this is my definitely, wheelhouse. Definitely not me. We're <laughs> switching. We're switching gears a little bit. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so it's, I think it's important because uh, here at Southern Boating, we really like to emphasize safety on the water. And one element of safety is being able to effectively move as needed right correct so our health and fitness kind of comes into play now you don't have to look like an olympian to go to enjoy boating right but you still want to make sure that you have a basic level of strength a basic level of cardio a basic level of flexibility and in our our january issue we actually put an article out called ship shape right that's correct and it talks about things that you can do for your health and wellness while you're out outside of the general activities that you could find yourself doing as mm-hmm. as a boater. So obviously there's activities like if you go uh, snorkeling, if you go diving, you know, all of that is strength, all of that is cardio, all of that is kind of great for your joints. Um you can also do paddle boarding, you know, there's even if you're if you're riding uh you know, water toys, like even all of that adds a little bit to the mix. So you can dive in fully and engage in those activities or if you're the kind of person that really likes to lounge around when you're out on the water you can add in just a little bit of time doing some very basic things to help strengthen the body strengthen the heart strengthen the lungs and keep yourself ready in case you or ever, even yeah. 
basically keeping yourself limber. Yeah, exactly. And it's it could be as simple as some calisthenics like air squats, jumping stretching. jacks, stretching. Honestly, you can get a whole body workout without putting out too much effort. Like you're just kind of warming up for the day. Uh, and I think it's really important that people I, consider I that. agree with you. It is important. I also agree with you that it is a little bit of related to safety because yeah. last thing you want to do is injure yourself while you're out cruising mm-hmm. well number one you're not going to enjoy your cruising as much right um, then number two is it's just going to help you all the way around mm-hmm. um from pulling in your anchor to just numerous things tying up even, at the dock even enjoying you know, the extracurricular activities like doing even your lines even, and stuff yeah. it's just really going to help you but even going out on the paddleboard like if you have more strength and more cardio you're going to enjoy that experience more Absolutely. The quality of that experience is higher. The quantity, as far as how long you can do that, is higher. So there's a lot more that you can actually do if you just remember that it's actually, it is a safety piece with everything that we're talking about, but it's also an experience piece where it makes your experience so better. much better. Right? Far, by far better. And, and you know, we're not talking about nutrition or bodybuilding or, you know, anything, cra- CrossFit, anything crazy like that. It's well, really just basic being, shape, basic shape, keeping your heart in shape, keeping your body in shape, staying limber so you can enjoy what you're doing a little bit more Yep, and, and trying to prevent yourself from getting injured is the biggest part, right? Right. I mean, that's to me always my thing. Obviously, I don't go out and actively try and improve myself all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do like to go for a walk. I do on the golf course. Um, you know, and, and I do a lot of stretching for golf. Um, obviously if you know me, I like to play a lot of golf and I have a history with golf. Um, but yes, it's, it's definitely important because I can tell you, you know, from doing your lines, pulling in an anchor, these are physically strenuous things sometimes for some people. Mm -hmm. And if they do a little bit of stretching or a little bit of calisthenics, you know, it'll improve them a little bit and make some of these tasks a little easier. A little easier, yeah. You know, even doing as far as the maintenance on your boat and keeping your boat up, it's going to yeah. help you with that. Yeah, that's true. You know, it, it's yeah. not going to make it such a laborious task anymore. That's true. So, you know, keeping yourself in shape is, is pretty important. Yeah. From a safety perspective, but as well as a health perspective. Absolutely. Um, and the healthier you are, the more you can enjoy things most times. Yeah. I mean, nobody wants to be... Bound to sitting on a uh, on the deck all the time because they don't have any energy or right. anything like that. Right. You know that's no fun. So yeah, just and keeping yourself in shape is and, important. And, and real quick, just so you, a lot of people, right? They say, you know, at the end of the day, I don't have the energy to, you know, go exercise, or I wake up tired every day, so I don't have the energy to go exercise. Mm-hmm. And the the funny thing is, you don't have the energy because you don't exercise. Correct. Right? So if you make the intention of going to exercise, you might be tired the first couple of days, but then it's like your body switches gears and it recognizes, oh, wait, I have to make some changes to how I'm using my energy so that I have the energy to do this. But that energy carries you through your day as well. So you end up feeling better at the end of the day. And I always say that it's it gives you energy. Yeah. Once you've done it for a couple of days in a row, all of a sudden you realize you're getting the positive effects from it and your energy starts to build. Yeah, it's just the philosophy of the more you give, the more you get. That's just how it works. So guys, if you want to stay in shape or find ways to stay in shape while you're out cruising, read the article. I mean, it's a great article. It was in January. January. 2024. And, you know, it's if you're looking for ways to stay shape, stay in shape, be a little bit more fit while you're out cruising, This is a must read. Absolutely. And the fastest way to get that, if it's not already in your mailbox, is to get the digital copy. So if you if you had the January issue and you missed the article and you just want to see it right now, you can quite literally log in, go to southernboarding.com, go to the web reader, select the January issue, log in with your email, and you'll be able to access it right then and there. If you don't have a subscription to Southern Boating, it's as simple as I'll put a link in the description, getting the magazine for a dollar a month, the digital magazine for a dollar a month, 
and you can access you know everything that we have right there as well thank you guys for coming to another episode of the southern boating podcast i said it right that time and uh, we will see you in the next episode What do you want to know? I got it all. I got it all. I tell you, I got it all. That too. That way. <laughs> the mic picks that up. <laughs> Take a breath. Just stand. Hands up. <gasps> hands up. Okay. Let, let me get to my page here real quick. Yeah. What page? Are, what are you looking for? I was looking for the Fontaine Peugeot. Why page 60. That's what I thought. You, you already passed it. No, I didn't. Yes, you. Oh, no, you didn't. Well, I'm, you're right. Welcome to another episode of Southern Boating. Wait, how do I want to say it? Welcome to another episode of the another Southern Boating, Boating Podcast. Podcast. Okay, ready? Welcome to another episode of the Southern Boating Podcast. Podcast. Bod? Bod? Bodcast. Bod. Bod. Well, we are talking about fitness <laughs> later, so. I'm so disappointed with it. Ready? Beep. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Southern Boating Podcast. You start over scratching my head. What, what's, so what? You could be doing things. It's not like we have to be, we're not news anchors. Okay, ready? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Take 75.